In this video, I'll show you how to use an interactive design with some lettering to create a new design. The advantage of using designs made from Brilliance Essentials is that you'll have more control over them and have a greater range of scalability. In Brilliance Essentials comes preloaded with 10 interactive designs and 15 fonts. More collections are being developed, so check the website for availability. I have Essentials open, and I have a design window with a 100 millimeter hoop display. So we're going to start by clicking the interactive tool and you'll see that I have one design pack loaded and it's applique frames. When you load new packs they'll be listed over here. And I can scroll through the designs. There are my 10 designs there and I'm going to use frame number 6. So just double click it and it comes in. When Essentials brings the design in it fills the hoop with the design. And you can see up here on our tool pane that this design is 133.6% of its original size. That means it came in larger than it was actually digitized. We can scale it down. And I do like to not have designs that totally max out the hoop. It just makes it too hard to do any sort of alignment at the machine because you just can't move a design if it totally fills up the hoop. So there's our design. I've got it resized. And before we add some lettering to it, let's talk about color. On the right side of the screen, we have two panels. The bottom panel is our properties panel, and that's where we see the colors. This design is an applique, and we can see that by the first two colors. Notice that it says applique position and applique material. So this one is where it's going to stitch an outline so you know where to place the fabric. This one will tack down the fabric and if necessary you can trim it back if you don't have a pre-cut. Now we're not going to sew this as an applique so it might be nice to make our design a little bit more efficient to sew. Let's click the color. Notice that the thread palette comes up and the chosen thread is the color that I see over here and it has the brother thread library. Let's pick a different thread brand. I'm going to pick the one that I use most often. And I'm going to type in 1270, a color I use a lot. Click OK. And I'm going to repeat that. Click Hemingworth. Type in 1270. Click OK. And one more time. Notice that as we do this, we're reducing the number of colors in our design. So now I'm down to three colors. Let's color the top part of the design in old gold. So I'll pick my library again. Let's type in old. And it goes right to old gold. And that's number 1052. So let's just type in 1052 this time. And now we have that part colored. Next we'll add some lettering. So click on the lettering tool and we have our ABC here and over here notice that in addition to the color tab on the properties panel we now have two more tabs letters and stitch. So your properties window is going to reflect what you have on the screen and what you're currently working with. I'm going to type in NOEL in all capital letters and I'm going to change to the single line text. You can do multiple lines, single lines, or put text on a circle. We can change the shape of our lettering. Now one way to do that is with the quick styles and we have a lot of those already entered, but I'm going to work with the envelopes. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to pick curve and slide it all the way over to the far right. We'll Move that down a bit and let's size it up. And all I'm doing is resizing this to better fit the shape of my design. And there we go. Now purple doesn't look so great on that, so let's change that and we'll use Hemingworth. There's actually an easier way to set your colors if you know that you're always going to use the same thread library and that's with the preferred. Let's type in I'll do grassy green. There we go, grassy green. Okay, and there's our design. So our design is now ready to save and sew. No need to recalculate any stitches 
or combine or do any other sort of counterintuitive steps, Essentials will let you save a design even if it doesn't fit in your hoop. So you don't have to worry about that. And sometimes we want to do that because we're making a big composition and we want to build it all in one design window and then piece out the pieces that work with our hoop. And because Essentials automatically saves in your specified machine format while saving its own working file, the .be file, there's no need to remember to export a separate stitch file. How much easier can it get?